You're listening to The Three Pillars of Success, a podcast that inspires people of all walks of life to gain perspective on what it means to succeed. My name is Geraldine Cavento, and I'm best known for entrepreneurship, my skills in web presence, and SEO. Thanks for listening. Enjoy the show. Hey y'all, how you doing? It's me, Geraldine, the Entrepreneur Guide Web and SEO Expert. And today I have a very special guest by the name of Elaine Bison. Hey, how's it going? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. I'm really excited to have you here. So thanks for accepting my invitation. And we'll go right into the first question, which is, who are you? Where are you from? And what do you do for a living? Hi, my name is Elaine Dazan, and I am from originally the island of Guam, born there, and was a military brat, so moved to Guam, to San Diego, Virginia Beach, back to Guam, Philadelphia, and now I am in Northern California and in the Bay Area, and I am a life and mindset coach. What do you do for fun? I'd like to say I'm a casual runner who likes to do a lot of races, so... (laughs) What I do for fun is training for the races, a mix of cardio runs, hill drills, hikes, yoga, and putting that training to the test. So registering for two to three races a month, which means I have to show up because I put money in it (laughs) and just test the training. And I find it fun because it puts me in a different zone in terms of a training mindset, a performance mindset. And community mindset, because I drag people along with me, like my family and my friends who don't like to run a lot. And I'm a lover of stories. As a storyteller, I love listening to stories. Audible books are my jam. I'm in three book clubs. One I facilitate, where we curate a whole year of books, forecast it so people can plan it into their annual schedule and join us, either in person or remotely. And then I'd watch a lot of movies. So if you're into movies, TV shows, Oreo cookies, I review all those on my Twitter at your coach Elaine is the handle. So you can get a beat on that. So those are the fun things that I love doing is physical movement and storytelling. All right. So as you know, this is the three pillars of success podcast. And we really want to know what does success mean to you? Success to me is around this hashtag people care banner I carry around. And I think it's something that connects the dots with my goal to be a kind and loving family member. I'm a mom of two kids. I've been with my husband, married for 17 years together for, you know, we've been together a long time and taking care of them has helped me understand what it takes to take care of me and being a generous friend connecting with others, being a Kumare, and engaging in employee engagement efforts where I work too. So it's really about seeing people successful and being that person that brings things together. Like for me, that's what success is when we create a community spirit and start thinking about the decisions we make that impacts not only ourselves, but for others. I love that. Community is a really big deal. I think there's a lot to be said for when you know that people within your community have your back. There's different personalities that exist in community, some of which aren't as vocal as others. However, whenever you're going through something or you need support and you reach out to the community for help, it's amazing to see who steps up. Even instances where people who step up are who you least expect to step up. So the fact that for you, you're putting yourself out there as an active community member who really cares about others and what they're up to and wants to generate more impact together is a really big deal. Yeah. And I'm surprised as I was thinking about success and the discussion today that it didn't involve any monetary or thing to measure. It's really about the quality of life, how happy people are. I I can't put a dollar sign on the happiness of my kids. And when I see them learning or when they do something really touching, like my daughter, she noticed that 
because my mom passed away. She noticed that there's not any picture of me currently in my physical state with my mom. And she was seeing that, wow, there's a lot of pictures of me, you, me and my brother, me and daddy, our family, but you don't have a picture of you and your mom. So she used an app and she created a picture of my mom as an avatar. <laughs> she said, she asked, what did Lola in heaven wear? I said, flip flops, jeans, and a t-shirt. <laughs> and she asked, did she have long hair or short hair? She had short hair. And here she comes with an avatar of my mom and me. And she said, I made a picture for you. Aww. And that just demonstrated to me success that a kind and loving family member would be that thoughtful to put her energy and attention and creativity towards a gift that she didn't have to buy, but she created. And all in all, that little package was like, that's success. It's all about that purpose. And my purpose is to help people see their purpose. And for her that day was to give me a gift that I don't think anyone else would have ever given me. Yeah, I think being part of a family unit, a community, any environment where there are multiple people who have the same common interests, which sometimes could be supporting each other or they all love each other or they're into one thing. I think that one thing that people don't really recognize sometimes or we forget most people is that we are being seen even when we think we're not. And the story you just shared about your daughter is a perfect example of that. That's really powerful. Thank you. Yeah. Clutch. <laughs> it <means the> heart. <laughs> I'll carry that with me, I'm sure. <laughs> so if you were to choose three pillars that were attributed to your path to success, what would they be? One is consistency. I think being consistent with your words and actions in particular is of great value. And consistency isn't born and done. I think consistency starts real small. If you can get to a stretch of a few set of actions that span a few days and you're mindful of the words that you're using because words have energy. And one of the things I love sharing right now is a science experiment that was done by a Japanese scientist who put containers of water and surrounded one container of water with words that said, thank you, you're helpful, you hydrate me. And the other container of water had, you suck, you're dry, you're not helpful. Surprisingly, that the container of water by the post-its that have the positive words created droplets and symmetrical patterns, almost like snowflakes. And then the container next to the negative words had the droplets dripping like it was crying on the glass. And when we think about our human bodies and that so much of it is composed of water, got to think about the kind of words we use to ourselves. So when we're consistent with our words and actions and we're consistent with the kind of talk track we offer ourselves to keep us motivated towards those goals, when consistency goes on for a period of time, that leads to my next pillar, which is calling out the small wins and the tweaks that you make in between of those small wins, because consistency gives you so many opportunities to practice, to test. And sometimes we just get so in the mix of what we're doing, we don't acknowledge what we're doing. So in that calling out the small wins, that leads me to the next pillar, which is connecting. Connecting the dots of what's working, what's not working, who is supporting me, who is not supporting me, how am I supporting myself, and then always connecting back to that purpose statement. And when we iterate this way, when we move this way with consistency, calling out those wins and tweaks and connect the dots to that purpose statement, over time, success becomes something of a practice. Wow. Success as a practice. That's super key for people to think about because one of the reasons why we created this podcast is because many people that I've spoken to and a lot of the studies say that most people don't think they're successful. And in fact, they feel like success is really far from them because they haven't achieved a particular thing. In my personal upbringing, I felt that way a lot. A lot of the success factors that were presented to me by my parents or the people around me always had things to do with material possessions or a four-year college degree or a house or 
a really big milestone. So I love how you share about the importance of small wins and how they can lead to something much greater within your environment and within everything that you're up to. When we project something so big, sometimes it can be overwhelming and getting started becomes a thing. And then as we get closer, that big thing from far away starts to look even bigger and stress, doubt, and fear can start setting in. So when you just take it moment by moment, small win by small win, and even when you're not winning, there's a great phrase from John Maxwell, right? Fail, fail, often fail forward. And you're still moving in that motion towards that thing. So even when you're failing, you're succeeding because you're trying and you're noticing it and you're tweaking and innovating and iterating all along the way. And when we fixate on that big thing, the quality of how we get there can suffer a little bit because now we're looking at the destination more than the present moment. Mm -hmm. What is a roadblock that you've had to overcome uh, throughout your path to success? There was a moment where time always seemed scarce. And I think that finite resource of time is a (laughs) opponent I go toe to toe with often. And it's a roadblock that whispers to me, how are you investing your time? And it's such a great question and reminder to think of time as money. We hear it often. And when we think about investing time the way we do money, it helps me see around and through the roadblock because that time, I can't always put a price tag on it, but what is that experience like if I'm going to devote 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes to something? Is it in alignment with the people care? Is it in alignment with me wanting to run and hear stories and create memories that people will remember me by? Because at the end of the day, that's what I would hope would happen. If, if somebody's at my, what I would call my roasting, not a funeral, but a roast about my life, what kind of story would they tell about me? And I think about the use of time that way. And it helps me get through those roadblocks of thinking I don't have enough time or I'm wasting my time. And there was a stage in my life where I thought, you're not worth my time. And that was a big deal for me to look at. Connecting with people is never a waste of time because that's the minute a story starts happening. And that's when I realized how important storytelling was to me. Do you have advice that you would like to share with anyone looking to achieve success? When you gain clarity on what success might look like for you right now and maybe three months from now and a year from now, what would you like to see? And when you get to dream and vision what you would like to see in all ways, then start thinking about how can I realize what I imagine in ways I could see, hear, taste, touch, or smell? Because that's when you know it's happening when you could have these tangible outcome and results that you could put a finger on, take a picture of, sniff, whatever. It's a testimony to your success. And then as you arrive, thinking about how you got there. And if you haven't gotten there yet, think about how you would like to get there, who you would like to go on that journey with, who you could call in for support and enjoy every minute of it. Because with Sporting events, it always reminds me of, it's not just that moment when you finish a race or get to the end zone or a finish line. As you do that, you think of everything that came before it. And if you haven't appreciated everything that came before it, then sometimes it's not a full yes to that win. It's like, man, I missed so much between that starting point into this destination. And I think that's the real real moment of success when you get to acknowledge and appreciate everything that you experience along the way. And one thing I'll say to our audience, and we've said this in in a few different ways in previous episodes, is that success can look different at any single moment. It is important that you define for yourself what it means to you, what your pillars are, but what your pillars are today might change a year or two from now, and that's completely okay. None of this is fixed. You know, the only thing that we can rely upon in our lives is change. And that includes the evolution of yourself. Any other closing thoughts? 
it's a success when you put yourself out there. Never be afraid to say yes to opportunities. And always remember that sometimes saying yes to saying no is also a good thing too. Just stay in alignment with what's most meaningful to you and success is sure to follow. All right. Well, that was the three pillars of success episode. We are here every single Wednesday on Apple, Spotify, Google, anywhere you listen to podcasts. So please do hit that like button, follow, subscribe, tell a friend and define your three pillars of success. Have a good day, y'all.